Through the writing. So today we are going to look at the Philadelphia Union in the Moving Forward series episode. And this season, it felt like a very Philadelphia Union kind of season. Or maybe you could say a very Philadelphia sports kind of season where, you know, this team definitely played well in the regular season. It was a another year where they were in the top per echelon of the Eastern Conference. But unfortunately, just like other Philadelphia sports team. When it comes to the playoffs and when it comes to where it is the moment of truth to see whether or not if they can get over the hum and maybe even win a tro trophy throughout this season in all these competition, they failed to do so. And in the end, it it's got to consider to, to be a failure of the season. And now it seems like, you know, from what we thought that, you know, they might be dismantling the, the core that they assembled this offseason. Maybe they might might not do that, and instead, maybe run it back one more time heading into next season. But nevertheless, this season, you know, in terms of the regular season, it was another relatively successful regular season with a 15-10-9 and record and finish with 55 points. They scored 57 goals this season while allowing 41 goals, which is actually a lot for uh, a Union team. I mean, for a team that has been very solid in terms of defensive way, and also not to mention having probably the best goalkeeper uh in the league for the past couple of years and andre blake uh 41 goals that they allowed definitely is a lot, lot more than we've seen in previous season but they still did finish with a pretty good go to franco of plus 16 uh they finished fourth in the eastern conference but they were ultimately eliminated by fc cincinnati in the second round and that you know fc cincinnati of course got their the the revenge all over over them and it, you could say that the the apprentice got revenge over the the master uh, in in, in that the, the battle between two teams that pretty much play an identical style of each other. Now, in terms of head coach, it's Jim Kern. He's the longest serving he head coach besides Peter Vermees. He's been here since 2014. And the chief soccer officer, Ernest Tanner, he's been there uh, since 2018. And I believe he's one of the lo longest serving uh, GM and is considered to be one of the best GM in, in the, the league. I mean, there was a lot of question uh, when Ernie Stewart, of course, uh, what was um was eventually moved on from this union team and take a U.S. Soccer uh Federation row and Ernest Tanner of course steps in and there was question you know what's gonna happen to this team and especially to Jim Kern of how him being on the uh, the hot seat but yeah you know ever since Jim Kern has has delivered and these two two guys have really been a huge huge reason why this team has been so good and the current core that they built uh that has been consistently considered to be one of the the best and always a team that is looking to contend for mos cup and trophies now in terms of the top goal scored unsurprisingly the the big three is the top three goal scorer you got julian carranza and daniel gastek with 14 goals followed by michael root with nine goals then you got jose martinez yes jose martinez is on the the top five goal scoring charts with three goals. I mean, remember how he scored a banger uh, to finally score his first goal in his career? Well, he, it feels like he might have found the magic touch because he would do it t two more times. And who would have thought that, you know, for a guy that is being compared to be, be the next Diego Chara and probably is going to go down as potentially one of the best number six to ever play in this league. I mean, I didn't think he would be scoring bangers like what what we saw this season, but that's what he did. He scored three goals, and speaking of bangers, Jacob Glesnes can definitely hit a banger. He also scored two bangers this season as well. And in terms of the top assist leader, you got Daniel Gazdag actually leads the team with 11 assists, followed by Ali Bedoya with seven assists, then Kyle Wagner with seven assists, Julian Carranza with six assists, and Michael Root rounds up the top five with four assists for this Union team. Looking at the last five seasons, again, this team has been consistently being one of the, the top top team in the Eastern Conference. Although this season, they actually finished the, the worst out of the last five seasons, finished in fourth place with a 15-10-9 and nine record. But that really doesn't mean too much because, you know, the Eastern Conference is very tight this year and they happen to unfortunately finish in fourth position. But they did finish with 55 points. And in 2022, they finished in first place with 19-10-5 and five record and finished with 67 points. In 2021, one, they finished second with a 14, 12, and 8 record and finished with 54 points. And then in 2020, uh, they finished in first place with 15, 
15, uh, or not 15, I'm sorry, 14, 5, and 4 record and finished with 47 points. Uh, 2020, they, of course, won, won the the supporters show in that COVID shortened season. And to this day, that is still the only trophy that the Philadelphia union has won. So again, that's been the problem for this union team where as much as they've been a very good team and they have made some deep playoff run, including made it all the way to MLS cup as what we saw in 2020. They just cannot get over, over the hump. And that's going to be a common feat. I'll mention throughout this, this moving forward series episode about the union, but in 2019, they finished in third place with 16, seven and 11 record and finished with 55 points. Now in terms of average attendance, 18,907, which is good for 17 in the league. Uh, you know, Subaru park is always sold out, uh, especially with the way that the union has been so, so good for the past couple of seasons. I mean, that's the thing, you know, if you win fans will show up and especially in a Philadelphia sports sports kind of world, if you win, you know fans are going to show up because it's not not long ago when this team was, was doing very bad badly uh, during the mid 2010s and how Subaru Park tends to always be 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 empty. But yeah, that's kind of the thing is that if you are able to win and especially compete for championship, you're going to get even the average Philadelphians uh, sports fan to, to pay attention to you, and they're definitely riding that that high with them, pretty much playing in a sold out crowd every single game. Now, in terms of MVP of this team, I mean, I could have easily gone with either of the, those big three, and that is another team that is kind of hard to pick in terms of M MVP because there's some really good players that really carry this team. But I'm going to go with Daniel Gastek, who had another good se season in this one time with the top goal scored and also the top assist leader. Uh, in terms of disappointment, not really much disappointment out of this team. Uh, maybe Joaquin Torres, though, again, you know, it, it's kind of unfair to pick pick on walking tours because it just feels like he never quite fit the 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 system uh for this union team and i could also say the same thing about andres Pereira, who you know he of course uh was part of this union team but just kind of never got himself into starting 11 and that now he of course is straight did back to nycfc but yeah considering the fact that you know walking tours was going to be a, a guy that could be a good good backup role especially be a guy that that can be similar to to um uh, well, a guy that could 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 be be a good good number ten replacement. He didn't really quite quite li live up uh, to that. Uh, I will also say that maybe another disappointment you could you could add on, on this, and maybe a dishonorable mention is Chris Donovan. I mean, Chris Donovan didn't really had a good 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 season either, but I think he's only escaped because of the fact that he of course scored that 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 big goal against the New England Revolution, and that when you of course need him, he he is able to to deliver. So that's kind of what what escaped him from the discipline. Appointment list consider this was maybe the year he can he can play that Corey Burke row and, and really play himself not not really in the starting 11 but maybe challenge Michael Root uh for that spot but it just didn't quite happen now in terms of young players to watch I mean there's a lot of them uh, I'm gonna go with Jack McGlynn and Quinn Sullivan but I could have easily chose uh Nathan Ario I could have also even even uh pick pick up on um um uh, oh god who, who was who was it again that i i just mentioned that kind of had a disappointing season but kind of, uh eventually actually he lives on the big 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 kind of chris donovan that's that's the the guy i mean i know he had a disappointing year but he's still a, a guy that could could do well i mean that's the thing about this union team and that's kind of the the thing we, we mentioned about this union academy one of the best in, in the league and it's no surprise that there are teams that are trying to copy that formula especially a certain san jose earthquakes team trying to copy that that formula a, as well and unfortunately the quakes haven't really quite had that success just yet in terms of copy the 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 format but certainly you know the 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 union a big part of this team has been built from from a cat academy but also just getting getting the 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 right players to be be in this team but still again those two guys i mentioned uh don't be surprised they could be regular starter in the case of jack mcclin i think he he definitely could be a regular starter for this team heading into this upcoming season so what went right for this union team so again pretty much most more of their corporate per form it to their expectation you know you know the big three definitely perform to its expectation though you could argue maybe maybe michael rue it might be the, the the low man out in terms of not really living up to that dp contract that he has i mean don't get me wrong you know yes he scored nine goals but you would expect him to produce more in that that number nine row considering the fact that shibilko has scored more goals than than what michael rude has done this season and we know how el casper shibilko and and the and how union fans feel about him being kind of in, 
inconsistent throughout the season. Uh, like LAFC, you know, the Union play a lot of games, but they kept up the intensity. And that that's kind of the, the, the thing that, you know, you got to give Jim Curran a lot of applause. The fact that despite the fact that, you know, even though he didn't change the, the lineup too much, this team's still, still able to keep up the intensity. And I even mentioned before how they kind of was an outlier a couple of years ago when, you know, they, they were dumped out of the, the CONCACAF Champions League and they were in ninth place. And it feels like it was kind of the, 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 the beginning of the end for the union in terms of their, their season, but nope, they instead bounced back in a big way to a point uh, where they made it all the way to MLS cup uh, that, that season. So yeah, again, this is a team that it's a resilient team and a team team that, 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 uh, you know, despite playing a lot of games, they, they don't drop their, their in intensity and and that you know again all credits has to go to Jim Kerr and also these players just kind of keeping up the same intensity game after their game and keeping up the good performance that they they've had uh despite the fact that they're playing a lot of games just like LA FC uh the back line and goalkeeping of course still rock solid although I, I will say that the back line you could maybe say they kind of regress a, a little little bit I mean Andre Blake is still Andre Blake but the back line at times were a little bit leaky but still uh, in terms of league standards, I think it is still above average and probably considered to be one of the best back line in the league itself. So what went wrong for this Union team? Well, it's pretty much like what we said many times uh, before in, the, in this movie for a series episode. They just can't get over the hump. Uh, another all in year fail to to fail uh, push in the playoffs and really in, in all competition too. You know, they got eliminated by LAF. F FC in a knockout tournament once again this time in the the CONCACAF Champions Cup and so much for the fact that they want revenge against LAFC for MLS Cup only to kind of flat on their face in the second leg of the the semifinal and then I think the other thing that kind of went wrong for for this team is the Kyle Wagner situation so there's no doubt that you know the Kyle Wagner situation was not per, per, pretty and this is not a good look for him considering he got caught with with using a racial slur and now he's going to be suspended uh for i think another two games heading in to the season and keep in mind they also just signed him a, a new contract too which again there was a lot of people weren't expecting him to be back with this union team and it's, especially with 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 the, the core member they have it feels like they're this off season they they were going to sell also their big pieces and there, there's still times where that could be the case especially even heading into the summer trans window but yeah you know it seems like high wagner is going to be back because they signed him to a contract extension but keep in mind he's not going to be available for the first couple of games and that he's going to have to go through a dante vincier kind of don't jump uh, at least in the beginning of the season because you know we, we know about this league has zero torrents uh tor tor racial slur kind of, kind of language and that you know it's very unfortunate to see kai wagner get get caught in terms of that and especially with such a brilliant player like that that's definitely not a good good thing you you want to see in such a star player like like him this union team so moving forward, how is this Union team going to look? Well, obviously, it feels like they're lo looking to run it back one last time. Again, I feel like this was maybe the year where they may dismantle some of their, their core. You know, there, there's been talks that Carranza could be, be moving on to another team. There's even talk that Leon Flock was going to be moving on for, from this team. Even uh, Michael Rue, uh, a guy that, you know, didn't really ha had had a great great season last year in terms of DP cal caliber. They were going to move on from, from him. But no, you know, when you look at this this team really the only big name that they're going to lose out of this team is Ali Bedoya though again that is a pretty big name losing your your captain in in Alejandro Bedoya and that's kind of where I get to the second point where how will they replace him him uh in ter terms of for this upcoming season now there is a, still a chance that they can replace him I mean you know there is still a chance where they can offer him another contract extension despite the fact that he is a free free agent but as Bedoya have, have said before this was potentially his last season for the Philadelphia Union in 2023. And indeed, if that is the case, that is a huge loss for this Union team, especially in terms of a locker room and lead leadership kind of present. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yes, when this Union team didn't have Bedoya, uh, this team was still doing relatively well. But at times, you can definitely see that that they, they do miss Bedoya and especially that leadership present. And that, that goes a long way, too, in terms of building a good team. I mean, Jim Curran can give all the, the good good pep talks all we, you want uh, or all he want, but on the field, you need to have that that good leader there to really push on the, the, the team, and that's what Alejandro Bedoya offer to this team, and losing him for this upcoming season, you know, it's going to be interesting to see which is 
going to be the player out of this court that will be that that next next uh player to step stepped up to be that leader and that locker room president and maybe even them finding a like to like replacement out of him for this upcoming season and then of course uh lastly again this kind of kind of goes goes back to talk about how you know they are are potentially going to run it back one more time but there's still a chance where they might be selling off some of their their young talent in the transfer window so guys like Carranza, Uru, uh even Kai, Kai Wagner and all these young talent in this team they could potentially sell them off in in the winter trends window though as we get closer and closer to the beginning of the season especially now into preseason it feels like they might be running back one more time and if that is the the case you know you got to say this is really kind of maybe the final chance for this union team to really compete i mean i don't want to say the window it is cl closing because you know this union team has done a good job in terms of replacing talent as what we've seen before when they lose some of their their most talented player they, they have an easy replacement uh, of that either by by signing or or from guys coming from from their their uh, academy pipeline but that being said in terms of this core and core it just feels like the window is is closing and that you know this upcoming season really is the last chance for this union team if they want to win a trophy especially mls cup i mean i I know, obviously, they would want to to win uh, U.S. Open Cup, and obviously, I don't think this year they're in the the Concacaf Champions Cup, if I'm I'm not not mistaken. So yeah, it's all about MLS Cup and the fact that you know they came so so close in 2022, and and again, you know, as much as we we talk about how great 2022 MLS Cup is, and it's going to go down as probably the greatest MLS Cup. That, that we've ever seen in history. I'm pretty sure Union fans would not want to remember that that MOS Cup for pretty much the, the rest of their, their life. And and that, you know, we said before how as much as it's great to see see an MOS Cup, especially your neutral or the team that won the MOS Cup, it's a nightmare situation to deal with when you're on the wrong end of it. And unfortunately, the Union was on, on the wrong end of that 2022 MOS Cup. And the only way for them to kind of brush that aside is to win MOS Cup uh, with this current core that could be the last time we might see this current core heading into this upcoming season but there you have it that is pretty much it looking at the philadelphia union and as always let me know in the comments below what do you think of this moving forward series episode and if you're a union fan what went right went wrong and most importantly moving forward how is this team going to look heading into this upcoming season but until then hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys hit the like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time